To start with, the war ended in 1991, and at that time, the whole city was divided into East and West Beirut with the Green Line dividing the two parts of the city. At that time, there was a lot of destruction, although some of the areas were, even during, with all of these years of war, they were still empty, vacant, or occupied by the displaced. But after the Taif Agreement that was signed in Saudi Arabia, the war officially ended, and the Hariri, Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri, came to power, became the Prime Minister of Lebanon, and that's when the reconstruction took place. So they, at the beginning, they put um, a call for planners for, to, to, to contribute. So that lots of people competed over that, but they chose this uh, the, the, the plan that they executed. So there was a lot of debate about how the city should look like, a city for the future, and all of that. So the slogan became Beirut Medina Ariqa Lil Mustaqbal, which is Beirut is a great city for the future, or something like that. So. The purpose was to build the, the ancient city, the old city of Beirut, and to build a city for the future. Unfortunately, this is not what took place. So the, the company the, the company for reconstructing downtown Beirut, the name it became Solidaire, was formed and they appropriated the land from the private owners who owned the downtown area and they were given shares and that was a very controversial issue because like you take the properties of these long-term landlords or merchants and people who live there and you give them a share in a company. That was not acceptable for many people. One of the challenges was lots of the buildings in the downtown area, although lots of them were vacant, but also some of them were occupied by the war displaced. So a, a central fund for the displaced was formed to give refugees compensations and they will leave the downtown area. That was not a very good project because lots of people got the compensations, but they ended up going and buying in uh, outside the downtown area, but mostly in slums. None of them were moving to their villages or the places where they came from because there was no like there was not enough development like no no good schools jobs and all of this and there was a lot of corruption also in the distributing the compensations and all of this so no one like these people were they felt that they were unfairly treated like we lived in these places for 20 years but now we are not getting enough compensation so that was a very that was a very, ten there was a lot of tension around those compensations. One of the main things which are, which, which is repeated in Amman, it's they created the same company who did the, the reconstructing of downtown Beirut. They created another down, alternative downtown in Amman, although the downtown, the original downtown is still there, they appropriated land in Amman and it was a functioning, a functioning area and they built the Abdali project, which is also very problematic in a different way. One of the things that should be included is to fulfill the needs of the local population. So for example, in Beirut, when they rebuilt the downtown area, uh, it's too expensive for old businesses who that existed in downtown Beirut to go back. It's too expensive for people to live in those uh, in the residential towers that they built. They built there, and so it's not catering for the needs of the locals. So in the, the image in downtown Beirut, it's like for other Arab rich people to come and shop and buy there. Those people didn't come because of the situation, the conflict in the area, and there are other places for the few rich people that everybody wants to be in, 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 in those cities, so they are not coming. So the downtown, downtown Beirut has 
all of these, when when it first, when it, the, the project was completed, they had uh, department stores, cinemas, super, a supermarket, fancier restaurants. Most of these places are not functioning enough, like, and they, it's, many of them closed down. So it's not a city for the needs of the locals. Now it's only for the elite. So it might be for people from different sectarian groups, but it's the same it's an elite group that's able, able to, to go there. I'm not a planner, but my suggestion like, is to in include more people and to get, get away from the neoliberal policies. And this is, this is the problem with these reconstruction projects that are happening in many parts of the Middle East, in Amman, in Beirut. In, now there are the plans for Syria. I heard people talking about the same thing. So you don't want the top-down policy. You want to include people from the local, uh, like people who own properties there, maybe give them uh, loans without that much interest or try to do something from the bottom up based on the because people who are using these spaces merchants who are who were successful in these spaces they would love to go back in Beirut now there are some initiatives like I showed some uh, examples where people because of the the, the, the quick change in the city. People want to hold and to like renovate some spaces. They want to to work together. And th th so there are some initiatives, but they are smaller in scale and, and, and it, it cannot change the, like the, the main development project that was coming from the private sector and the government working together and taking over the space. So the smaller groups, they are, renovating a building here, a building there, they are doing a little museum here. Like my suggestion as someone who worked on Amman and Beirut is to include some of these actors, include some of the grassroots organizations because they have something to say. These are the users of space in those places. <laughs>